Hey everyone, this is Stefan from Project Life Mastery, and today I'm excited to introduce you guys to Gary Ryan Blair. Gary is known as the Goals Guy, and he is the author of a book called Everything Counts and the founder of the 100 Day Challenge. Now, I've got a, a pretty amazing story that I wanna share with you guys about how Gary's work has influenced my life. It's about nine years ago, I, was, I think I was 23 years old, and I had a friend that came to me and said, Steph and I have this goal that I'm gonna make $100,000 in 100 days. And I said, really, how are you gonna make that happen? He said, well, I came across this guy named Gary Ryan Blair. He has this program called the 100-Day Challenge, which helps you to achieve almost any goal in 100 days. So I was curious about this, and at the time, I was in a position in my life where I was struggling. Um, I was broke, I was living on my friend's couch, uh, sold my car, so I was in a very desperate position in my life, but I hit rock bottom, I was willing to try and do anything. So the program, I think at the time, was around $150. I couldn't afford it, but I said, you know what? I'm gonna find a way to come up with this money. So I worked uh, some extra construction work on the side of my weekend, came up with the money, invested in the program, set my goals for the 100 days, and part of the program is you watch a video that motivates you and helps you stay on track for the 100 days. Well, what happened was I made it to about day 30, and I got to that point where I just, I got off track, um, I broke my commitments that I had to myself and sure enough, I, I just got so discouraged. I kind of avoided it and I gave up. And what that forced me to do is it forced me to really look at myself and say, Stefan, if you want to be successful, but you can't even commit to something and stick with it for a hundred days, you can't even watch these videos and stay with the program. So I actually decided I'm going to sign up for this program again. The next time that you offered it, Gary, I signed up. This time I said, you know what, one of my goals is I'm just gonna make it 100 days, because if I can do something for 100 days, then that habit alone is something that can change my life. Uh, this time around I made it to about day 60, okay? The third time that I enrolled in your program, I eventually made it to that 100 days. And for me, that was that in and of itself was a huge accomplishment because I, I just think that the, the habit of doing something every day, following through on your commitments, um, uh, just being consistent, that for me has translated what I've learned from your program into so many different aspects of my life. Since then, I've done your program maybe seven or eight times. It's one of the keys. Uh, many of my followers know I do these goals reports where every year I share my goals for accountability and I do check-ins. A lot of that has been influenced by your work. Um, I've now sent through Project Life Mastery, I think maybe thousands of people to your program uh, over the last six years. And everybody that I sent through it loves it, enjoys it. So Gary, I just wanna say thank you so much for impacting my life. Thank you for impacting the lives of people that I've sent your way. And thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. Man, you are very kind. I am very happy for you and everything you've been able to accomplish over the last couple of years. And quite frankly, it's very impressive, very impressive. I appreciate it. So do you mind maybe sharing with people a little bit about yourself? What's your story and how did you get to be known as the goals guy? <laughs> Yeah, you know, sometimes I always wondered how did Michael Jackson get the king of pop title or even Vegas get the uh, king of rock and roll. And the list is endless with James Brown and so forth. It was a self-ordained title, but this how I got there is pretty simple. Um, you know, there's an acronym I came up with a couple of years back called just focus, follow one course until successful. And I've always realized that there is power in focus and I wanted to pick a lane. And it, it just wasn't something that I wanted to concentrate just on the subject of goal setting or execution. There was something special in where I knew my expertise was. And, and to even backtrack a little bit further, I have a long history of um, family in the military, myself and so forth, where uh, a lot of folks, special forces, uh, I was just brought up with certain disciplines and ways of thinking and acting and executing. And ultimately, it, it would, really what it came down to was I wanted to create a program really that focused in on showing people how to execute quickly, how to execute almost in a stealth manner, if you will, but more importantly, how to get a dramatic amount of, of results in a very short, condensed period of time. And no one really does that. Everyone talks about, you know, what can you do to set and achieve a goal and all that stuff? And that's wonderful. That's great. But I, for me, I just want to play a much bigger game. And, and if you don't mind, I'll share the reason why. My feeling on it is we're all playing a high stakes game of one and done. I mean, we're not coming back. This is, we got one shot and we're out and it's over with. And you are really are a perfect example of really living at large and doing it right, where you're experiencing the world. You're traveling, you're young, you've got your health and you're making some money, you're adding value. Um, and, and I mean, your story is just is textbook, man, and I'm real happy for you. But uh, from that standpoint, my feeling is this, you know, if, if we all are playing a high stakes game of one and done, we owe it to ourselves to find the fastest way to compress time. 
the fastest way to go from A to Z or A to B, the fastest way to essentially turn our, 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 our dreams into outcomes and realities. And that's what I specialize on. Um, honestly, that's a quick, short story, but that's, you know, I'm sure you've got a few follow up questions, so go ahead. Well, I know you've worked with thousands of people, individuals, you know, professional athletes, uh, Fortune 500 companies, and you, you know, specialize in helping them to set and achieve goals. Um, you know, I know a lot of people, though, when it comes to goal setting, and maybe you can help answer this, is a lot of people, they set goals, but they don't follow through. They don't achieve them. They, they feel they come up short. You know, the common, um, you know, story of people setting their New Year's resolutions, but, you know, I don't know what percent, but the percent is pretty low of people that actually achieve them. So why do people fail to achieve their goals? It's a lot simpler and much more profound than people think it is. And here's what it comes down to. You said a word earlier, which was the word commitment, and that which you could commit to over the course of 100 days. And if, remind me later to tell you a story about my, my boys and what, what I've been able to do with them. Um, here's, here's the thing. Built into the 100-day challenge is a concept called the integrity pledge. There's three steps to it. If you make a commitment, you honor it. If you make a promise, you keep it. And if you set a goal, you achieve it. Now, this may sound like old Boy Scout type stuff, but let me explain to you the significance of this. You know, I can only speak to the States, to the U.S. I know you're Canadian. But here, we live now where a little over 60% of all first marriages end in divorce. Now, let's just stop and think about that for just a moment. If the single biggest commitment that people are going to make another human being end in divorce, this doesn't mean that we have a problem. It means we have an epidemic. We have a real serious issue. And then if you go into second and third divorces, or should we say marriages, the numbers exponentially start to grow upwards of the, into the high 80s where you start to look at third marriages. There's a reason for that because once you start breaking commitments, it's a lot easier to break them again and again and again because you've already corrupted your psychological immune system. You've already kind of set the slippery slope. So the, the take on it is real simple is that, you know, we hear the word commitment issues. We think it's funny when it comes to a relationship, but it's a much more larger pervasive issue. So what I was interested when I designed the program was that I asked myself that question. What's the biggest challenge that people have and how do they fix it? And the biggest challenge is just that. They make commitments they don't, uh, they, 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 they don't honor. They make promises they don't keep. They make goals that they don't achieve. So what's the solution? The solution is actually very straightforward as well. It means you start off setting small or making commitments that you, are, you would absolutely lay in front of a bus for um, that you're going to honor. That you never make a promise to yourself or another human being that you're not going to follow through on and keep. And more importantly, you never set a goal. You never set a goal that you are not absolutely committed to achieve. Now, the beautiful part about that is that plays into a very, very important strategy, which is this. Success requires a short yes list and a long no list. What people have a tendency of doing is they create a very, very long yes list and a short no list. You need boundaries. You need to manage your time and attention and resources and all of that type of stuff to maximize your, your results. So what that means is you make fewer commitments. But the ones that you commit to, they've got some meat, they've got some teeth, they've got meaning and, and you know, some, some grit to them. Same thing with your promises, the same thing with your goals. You follow that, man, you're going to be in much better shape. You really are. I love that. Yeah, and, that, and that's one thing, things I learned from you that I do for myself as well. The goals that I do set, they're usually not overly ambitious. They're, they're, they're goals that I, I have a level of confidence and certainty that I can achieve. That might be a bit of a, a little bit of a stretch, but it's not mm -hmm. a, a, such an unattainable uh, unrealistic goal that I'm setting. And I'd love to hear your opinion on that because I know that there's kind of two, two schools of thought. One school of thought is, you know, you should set these huge, unrealistic, crazy goals. But often what I see from a lot of people that do that is they keep setting themselves up to fail. And then when they're always failing, they're never achieving their goal. They get discouraged, they give up, and they lose that confidence and certainty that they can achieve anything in their life. So do you think it's better to, is there a sweet spot of setting goals that are maybe are attainable, but also at the same time, they do stretch you to a certain extent? No, it's an excellent question. Yeah, the answer is, listen, I'm a big believer in swinging for the fence. And I mean, even just knocking the ball into another county, another zip code, another country. But how you get there is the key to it. So yeah, going back to the idea of promises, commitments, and goals. If you have an issue with this, if there's a demonstrated track record of starting and stopping and not following through, it would be unwise for you to swing for the fences right now because your foundation, your your history, if you will, your precedent has been set that you 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 have a lot of weak skills from the standpoint of, of execution. So you start small, but 
the, the fact is you start small by honoring today's commitments, by achieving today's goals, by honoring and or should we say keeping today's promises. And then you build upon that and you increase upon that. You could turn your life around quickly. But I, I assure everybody that it's always going to come down to start small and progressively start to expand and increase upon that. Because what happens is your confidence grows, your, 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 your psychological immune system, your, your just who you are as a human being, your internal fortitude starts to strengthen. And you could build upon that and then start making leaps. The other part, and this is where the program where we'll discuss, is when you start to learn better execution strategies. Because the fact is... I don't care what it is, whether it's raising kids, investing money and growing money, or again, setting and achieving a goal of building a business. There's a right way and a wrong way. There's a, a mediocre way. There's a good way. And there's an absolutely, there's an accelerator. There's ways that you could do it faster, better, more efficiently, and with far less energy. And that's what I specialize in. Awesome. So what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see a lot of people make when it comes to setting and achieving goals? The biggest ones really have to do with really kind of like really not having enough gasoline in the car, if you will. Um, real simple. You know, we've heard the old story, you know, you when you build a business, I mean, you know, you could sell the razors, you could sell the razor blades. I, I'm a kind of guy who believes in selling the razor blades. Uh, there's more money, continuity and everything else on the back end and ongoing. Well, let's just look at life and so forth. You know, my cell phone, probably much like yours, you have every contact that you have. And those are the names of clients and friends and, you know, influencers and, and everything else. But the second my battery dies on that phone, the phone is useless. The utilitarian value of that phone is gone. The same thing with my automobile. Any one of my cars, if, if they don't have gas in them, I'm not going to go anywhere. If my relationship, if the love is gone, you know, it's, you know, the, the relationship is over. It's just the way that it goes. So it, it, it is so extremely important for under, us to understand, not only do you need a why, but the why is more important than the what. But critical to this is that the why is a replenishable asset. It's a depreciating asset. It will always operate and move towards entropy. It's going to run out. So unless you continue to nurture it and remember it and focus on it and make that the focal point, and this is why in the 100-day challenge, you always hear me confirm, the mission of this program is to inspire, to promote, and to celebrate excellence. And every decision that I make and I mean in my life, it really is designed to, to answer that question. Does this in some way, shape or form inspire excellence? Am I promoting it? Because I don't want anything to be sent out from my email or my address or my phone that does not uplift or promote some sense of positive virtue. And more importantly, does it celebrate the human condition? Does it, does it, does it continue the, to, the loop and inspire other people to get involved because of the words or the example or whatever the case might be? And, and I think those three words are great for anybody's mission. If, if you happen to be involved in, in education, you know that your goal should be to, to inspire, to promote, and to celebrate a love for learning for, te for, for kids. Uh, if you're a nutritionist, it should be to inspire and promote and celebrate a love or should we say, you know, uh, maximum nutrition and in, 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 um, in physical excellence, if you will, in, in your body. So that's, again, a long, long answer to a short question. Sorry, my man. No worries. So do you think um, the key to, to, to having that motivation is, is finding that why? And I guess I'm sure the why could change or evolve at different times. Uh, along the journey as well. But do you see that to be the key to having that motivation to stick with your goals? Yeah, but, but you know, the why comes from a couple of different sources. The, here's a good part about it is that, you know, sometimes we think about, we, we think about the word integrity and we think it's kind of virgin white and it's supposed to be beautiful and, and this and that. Integrity just means that it's, it's accurate. It just means that it works. And the fact is when it comes to each one of our lives, there's good, bad, and indifferent as it relates towards relationships and situations and data and so forth. But if we act with the truth, we're acting with integrity. Okay, so it begins there. The first thing is to realize is that if somebody is underperforming, if somebody is not happy with, their, with whatever situation is in their life, my advice is always, uh, you, you may want to consider getting angry. You may want to consider looking at the mirror and saying to yourself, why are you allowing yourself to underperform? Why have you allowed you know, this type of behavior to, 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 to be a representation of who you are as a human being? Why have you lowered your standards in order to fit in with the, with, with the masses when you know deep in your heart that if, if you want to become great, you've got to find ways to stand out? So to me, anger is a trigger. It's a darn good one. It should not be the thing that drives you always. It's a trigger. It should kickstart you. And then all of a sudden, yes, the wise change, the wise mature, the wise become positive, the wise become virtuous, the wise become, you know, the thing that truly gets your mojo working and gets you turned on. 
So that's certainly one way of, of, of a number of them, yes. Yeah, you know, I know for myself, times when I've hit rock bottom or I've had to look myself in the mirror and be honest with myself and confront, you know, that I'm not showing up or I'm not stepping up the level I want, that, sure. that pain, I guess you could say, is what has propelled me and given me that momentum oftentimes to achieve my goals. And also, I know a lot of professional athletes, for example, Michael Jordan was known for you know, always looking for little things, a little someone criticizing him as, you know, to, to give him that extra edge or that motivation to, to keep going with it. And so I found that, you know, the people that are the best, they, they always have these little whys or they're always looking for things that could further motivate them to move forward with their goals. You know, I'll, I'll give you an example that, that kind of in, turns me on and inspires me. And it's triggered by anger and frustration and disappointment. Um, nowadays, what I see, and this has happened with uh, here in the U.S. with the president. This has happened with when I go and I see speakers and I see medium articles and I see a whole bunch of different stuff. The amount of profanity that is being used to, that, that people are doing um, is degrading. Is it, 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 it takes away from the message. And it, it, it reminds me why I got into this game, which was to set a good example was to raise the bar, to do the right thing. And I know you believe in that as well. And it, it continues to astound me that people would do this to themselves under the guise of being cool or trying to fit in or be different or, you know, this is the accepted norm. No, it's not. It's nonsense. It's some garbage that you sold yourself on. And whenever I see it, it just, it, it strengthens my core to do the right thing. So hope that helps as an example. Great. And then do you, do you also recommend and teach to have uh, processes of reward you know, they say that whatever gets rewarded, it gets repeated to further, I guess, condition that when you are making progress or taking action or you achieve your goal to how do you condition the habit of making sure you continue to follow through and commit? Oh, dude, that is uh, people have no idea how good a question that is. that You just asked. OK, uh, what, what a reward is, it's it's an external it's an external symbol. But what it what it does is what it symbolizes is internal virtue. So where do we see symbols? The green jacket at the Masters. We see the Super Bowl ring, even a wedding ring. They're all symbols, okay? Then you start to go through, you look at a black belt in karate. The list is in. I could go on for a long time, but here's the key, the, the most important takeaway. Each one of those things that I just mentioned, you have to earn them, number one. You can't go to the store and buy them. You have to earn them. The beautiful part about it is what do they symbolize? What do they mean? It means long-term commitment. It means focus. It means dedication. It means it, it, it means all the positive virtues. And this is why I think we have a lot of strange definitions in this world. And what I mean by that is we hear people say, you know, the good life is to eat, drink and be merry. And uh, listen, I, I played that game. I did that in my 20s and 30s. OK, in early 30s. But I've come to realize that the good life is the discipline life when I'm disciplined with my money, when I'm when I honor my commitments, when I follow through on what I say I'm going to do. When I deliver excellence, all of these type of things, I feel great about myself. My clients are happy. My relationships work out whenever those things dip. And I, I'm real conscious at this stage of my life, you know, that I, I, I really realize that you know, like you, you know, your life is public and you need to be the example. So that even puts a little bit more pressure on you, which I think is good anyway. So the, the beautiful part about it is. Yes. Do we need rewards? I think was where you're getting at. And the answer is absolutely positively. Yes. Now, here's the type of reward I'm going to suggest everybody do. You want utilitarian rewards. And what I mean by that is the, the problem with the problem with going out and let's just say going, say, I'm going to go on a trip to Hawaii or go here or there. Those are fantastic, but it's going to run out and you may have a couple of memories. But I'll tell you this much. If you go out and you buy yourself a beautiful shirt, Maybe go out and get yourself your wife. Maybe it's a gal. Uh, just a gorgeous dress. Maybe it's a, a, a Mont Blanc or a very expensive pen or even a watch. I promise you this. The next time you wear that watch, whenever you use that pen, whenever you put on that shirt or jacket or that dress or whatever the case might be or those pair of shoes, it, you are reinforcing and reminding everything that went into them. And I think that comes down to that's another strategy that relates towards investments is that very often what people do is they just go out and buy something that is on sale. My advice would be, listen, there's certain things that are you going to use on a consistent basis. They're going to have utilitarian value. So how do you tie your, your investments, if you will, to your behaviors and then reward the appropriate behavior? Now, it works just the opposite as well. And this is another strange part. And I think it's worth going here for just a moment. You know, there's the old saying that behavior that gets rewarded gets repeated. Okay. Now, but that goes for good and bad. 
because we've seen the Kardashians, we've seen the Dennis Rodmans, we've seen all the lunatics who get a lot of airtime and they think that's the way to go. But that's that's not the bag or that's not the game I want to play. Uh, so it, it does work both ways. Certainly, we want to focus in on the positive, on the virtuous side of it. But, you know, if, if you don't mind, let me give you a, my definition of a goal, because you may or may not have that as a question. And to me, it goes back to the symbol. It is a glorious celebration of all that is good and virtuous about the human condition. Now, that may sound like a strange definition, but I'll give it again. A goal, if it's achieved with honor, is a glorious celebration of all that is good and virtuous about the human condition. Because if you do it with honor, you do it the right way, again, it, everything begins with decision. You made a decision. You, you reinforce that decision. You, you stayed focused. You demonstrated consistency and grit and overcame obstacles. You did everything you needed to do in order to capture the prize. And that's the thing that I love about this. And what I love about what I do for a living is, you know, outside of somebody's family, their wife, their kids, their loved ones and so forth, extended family, the most precious thing to people are their dreams, are their hopes, their future. What do they want to do? And I've been so fortunate over the years to to be in contact with people. In this case, now it's 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 a pretty decent number uh, of people who have shared with me or directly or indirectly the things that they're working towards. And to have a hand in knowing that you help people, even your story this year you shared earlier, it, it's meaningful because it's why I got into this in the first place. So you just reinforced that and fed me, and I appreciate that. But th- that that's important. Great, that's an awesome strategy. Um, let me ask you this. I know you've talked before about performance gaps. Do you mind explaining what you mean by uh, by performance gaps? Of course. Listen, right now we're, um, what are we, three quarters of the way through the year. So let's say somebody had a goal. Goal was real simple, $200,000 in revenue. If you break that down to four quarters, we could see the numbers. What that means is right now on this date today, you should have 150 grand, bang, in your pocket. That's it. That's just the reality. Where, where's the gap? The gap is one side or the other. Either you made more or you made less. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, they made less. So how big is the gap between where you are and where you want to be? Now, what I specialize in is a concept that we don't necessarily hear outside of sports, and it's called closing speed. We hear like, you know, somebody's going to play for the Giants or the Jets or whatever team happen to be watching. And how quickly does the wide receiver close in or the safety close in and basically close that gap, if you will, and block or intercept that ball? Well, in your case, what's your, how do you accelerate your closing speed? Because you got, you know, 100 days, 99 days, 98 days, and the, and the countdown goes, it goes and it goes and it continues. So ultimately, it really comes down to what are the things you're going to do differently to execute better and faster and smarter to, again, close the gap between the two. And for me, what I've come to realize is that no matter how good people's intentions are, there's always going to be gaps in their lives. That's that's one constant. Yeah. And, and how do you recommend people deal with failure? Because failure inevitably is part of the process. There might be some goals you, you, you don't achieve, you don't fall through on. Um, I know obviously the, 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 the wrong way, I guess you could say, is, you know, you don't want to get you don't want to just give up. You know, you want to get yourself back on track with it. But what's the mindset that you can offer to people when it comes to failure and how you look at it? Excellent question. Here's here's the and here's the answer. What we have to do is understand something is that the things that are that we have under our control, there's only three. And this is what separates every single human being. It's what we think or beliefs. It's what we say or written or spoken words. And it is what we do, how we execute what we think, what we say and what we do. Those are the only gifts with which God has ordained us with everything else. We got the same liver, kidney, spleen, you know, we got eyes, maybe a different color and so forth. But that's it. All right. So what we need to do is go back and, and go back and really almost look at very simple principles of, in terms of what drives this universe. And the most important one really is cause and effect. And there's really there's, – there's three, but I like to consider there's four cause and effect relationships. The first one is no cause, no effect. That's no taking, no washing. You put nothing in, you can't possibly expect to get anything out. Now, before I go further to answer your question and give some really a really good answer – is that what are causes? Causes are three things, what you think, what you say, and what you do. That's, and that's it. Those are the only three causative agents that exist on this planet. Next, what are, you know, cause and effect? What are effects? Effects are results. Your age, your weight, your, your cholesterol level, your financial portfolio, whatever it is. But what are the results that exist in your life right now and the relationship between the two? So as I mentioned, no cause, no effect. Put nothing in, put nothing out. Okay? That's obviously going to lead to failure. It's going to lead to disappointment. The second one is wrong cause, wrong effect. 
there's one of three things or all three things went wrong. Something you you were thinking, your thought patterns were probably off, right? Maybe you thought of poverty rather than abundance, thought you couldn't even before you began. Could be anything. What you say. Well, we live in a world right now where so many people get themselves in trouble and stick their foot in their mouth all the time through Twitter and say the wrong thing, tweet the wrong thing and so forth. So it, it shouldn't be a stretch to, to, for people to realize that you know, there's a lot of unforced errors. There's a lot of, of damage that people are causing at their own hands because of what they type, what they say, what they write, whatever the case might be. Okay. So if, if, if you look at it from that standpoint, what you start to realize is that failure is a result. There's cause and there's an effect. There's an effect. If you go back, you have to trace it and you say to yourself, there are one of three things that took place. Something I was thinking was incorrect. Maybe you were operating from a position of anger, maybe jealousy, maybe disgust, maybe fear, or whatever the case might be. But what were your beliefs? Next, what did you say? What came out of your mouth? What did you type? Or whatever the case might be. How were you talking to yourself? And how were you speaking externally? Were they in sync with one another? Last, your actions. Now, the great part about this is we all know that success leaves clues. Well, failure leaves clues as well. So if, if you're smart and you're wise, you just go back and you assess. Look at your strategy. Look at your behavior. Behavior never lies. Look at what you said, what you did, whatever the case might be, and look at your thought pattern. But you have to be an adult. You, you can't do this and say and nod your head and say, yeah, that's I get it and I understand it. That's what most people will do. And there's a huge difference between really knowing something. It's like the, the old Confucius saying, to know and not to do is still not to know. Unless you apply it and truly, it, you've got to get past the intellectualization of it. You really have to get down to the application. Until you learn to apply it and make those changes, you'll continue to repeat the same outcome. And that's why people fail again and again and again. And then I said there, were, there was a third. Then you have right cause equals right effect. That's where you, the game that you and I have played. We figured out, you know, how do you live a good life? How do you, how do you add value to people's lives? Um, how do you get them to, to find benefit from that, where they can repeat the things that you've done, and as a result, you get to enjoy a quality life as well, and, and you're doing it right. But there's another level, and this is where I, where I like to play at, which is if you accelerate the cause, can you accelerate the effect? If you speed things up, could you speed up the outcome? The answer is yes. And this is why I've, I've said for years, you can get 10 years worth of results you know, in 100 days if you do the right things. And you've, you've got to focus on what are, what are the key strategies that accelerate your progress. Awesome. And well, one thing I love about the 100-day challenge is how you have the after-action reviews. And that has always benefited me because the process of checking in on the goals but also reflecting and, and, and trying to extract the lessons of if you are off track – you know, this is why you're off track and, and, and learn as much from that. And I think, honestly, when I look back, what kept me going with the challenge and year after year is because all of that's been built in to, even though, you know, I didn't complete it the first time to, to you know, 100 days in a row. Um, the, the, like, it's amazing what you teach in that about integrity and all the different lessons. That's always stuck with me to make sure that I did go back through and repeat the process moving forward. So, you know, even though I might have failed with certain goals in the past, I think what you teach around that has always been very valuable to make sure that people have a system where, one, they don't get off track or they don't fail in the first place. But if you do, then you can learn from that and continue to move forward. No, that's a great point. You know, I always look at the after action review as, as, a, um, as a weekly come to Jesus meeting is really what it is. And you're, you're really examining everything that you've done. So it, it kind of brings up the question. Let's look at the worst case scenario. The biggest problem, let's just say in corporations, because many people may be watching and they work for a company. Maybe, maybe not everybody's an entrepreneur. And usually you're going to get a once a year performance evaluation. The problem with that is there's too big of a gap. It's uncomfortable. It's difficult, one, to have those conversations, but two, just to enforce that level of discipline on a weekly or monthly basis. But if, if, if you're really honest with yourself, we have to realize that every action produces a result. We, we are a stimulus response society. This is the way it works. It, and, and here's the thing about it. Th this is a rule without an exception. No one gets a pass on this. this. This is just the way the world works. But every single day, you're going to be eating. That's either going to give you energy or take it away. You're going to be involved in a relationship that's going to get better or worse. You're, you're, you're going to do something as it relates towards your, your marketing funnel or sales funnel that's going to put more people in or less. Uh, your conversion rate is going to improve. Or this. Every single day, your life is going to improve or unfortunately go in the other direction. And, and that's the, the reason why, if, if you don't mind, maybe we'll just kind of shift over to everything counts for just a moment because uh, I think it blends right to it. 
everything counts. And, and by the way, uh, let me tell you about the, the cover of the book first and I'll get into it. Okay. On the cover, as you're well aware, there's an exclamation mark. And earlier we had discussed about the importance of symbols. The exclamation mark is the symbol for me is the symbol of excellence. And here's a great way. I think I, I really think a really good way for everybody to look at it. There's three ways to end a sentence. There's a period, there's a question mark, and there's an exclamation mark. That's it. That's all we got. A period doesn't draw any attention. It's a mundane, regular, run-of-the-mill thing. Well, a lot of people's performance is regular, run-of-the-mill, mediocrity doesn't really mean all that much, doesn't stand out in any way. And if you notice, 99.9%, .9%, really, probably 99% of, of, of all your sentences are going to end with a period. Not that big of a deal. Then you have the question mark. The Latin derivative, if you will, was originally called the point of interrogation. It was an interrogation point is what it was actually called, and it was changed. But the, the idea being is that why were you late? Why didn't you, why didn't you follow through on this? Uh, why didn't you achieve this goal? Why, are you not, why did you underperform this month? It could be a number of things. But you, know, you put yourself in a position where you have to do this. Why that's important is because when it comes to life, you're going to play two games. You're going to play offense or defense. And as you know, I'm a big believer in being an offensive threat. And you want to deploy offensive strategies. When you put a question mark after your work ethic, after your reputation, after anything that you do, you are playing defense because now you have opened the door for somebody to question you. That's not a wise move. The exclamation mark is just that. It is a point, it is a point of, 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 of a triumphant outcome. It is important. It is significant. It screams out, pay attention to me. And for me, I looked at it as that was the mark of excellence. So that was the reason why that's actually on that cover. And, and I don't share that story all that much. I just wanted to pass it along to you. I uh, thought you'd appreciate it. But coming back to um, <clears throat> the whole idea, we've got to realize that every choice that we make in life and, and, and is, is, is going to improve our lives or take us in the other direction. And what I argue in it is, although we have a compass that goes north, south, east, and west, life doesn't work that way. Life is a north-south relationship. And what I mean by that is, look at it this way. Your weight doesn't go left or right or east or west. It goes north or south. Your portfolio goes north or south. Your blood pressure goes north and south. You know, your relationship goes hot and cold, north and south. And your grades in school go north and south. Everything works that way. So you have to sit back and say to yourself, okay. And the, the thought behind everything counts is that everything you think, everything you say, everything you do leads you north in the direction of your goals or it takes you south away from them. And there's far too many people. Here's the, the problem people have. You don't mind me kind of demonstrating a little thing. They do kind of a – here, I have a house in, in Florida and in New York. And the road that connects them is 95. 95 is a north-south relationship. That's just the way it goes. So it doesn't matter if I'm in New York, if I'm in – you know, going through the Carolinas or Virginia or Florida itself. I'm either going north on 95 or south. The problem that people have is they do a few things that are good for their mind or their body. So they take maybe one or two steps north. And then they do a few things that are bad. So they'll go down to the gym, work out for an hour. Then they'll go home and they'll have a beer, maybe fire up a cigar or a cigarette, right? They'll tell their kids, always tell the truth, do the right thing or this or that. But if, you know, God forbid, if Gary or Stefan calls, tell them I'm not here, I'm busy, or I'm doing something else. And what we're constantly doing is we're doing a few things that are good and a few things that are bad. And we wonder why we're in the same spot at 50 than we were at 20. And it's because we're doing, again, we're going north and south, north and south, north and south. And we have to understand that the only direction worth moving in life is north. That's the only direction. So what I like about north is the star up in the sky is called Polaris. Polaris is the brightest star in the heavens. The nice part about Polaris, and this is the beautiful part about this, I hope you don't forget this story, is that north never changes. All the other stars rotate and move around. North is the only stationary star. It never changes. And this is why Columbus used it to navigate the oceans. This is why very often special forces, they look for that North Star to give them an indication in terms of which direction they're moving in and everything else. But the North Star is the, the again, going back to the Latin derivative, it is basically called the Navigatoria. It is the navigator star. So you could use that to navigate your life in the same way that you use everything counts as a philosophy to navigate what you're doing because everything is taking you north or south, better or worse. Right or wrong, good or bad, vice or virtue. It's the way it goes. I love it. So tell us about the 100-day challenge. Why did you create the 100-day challenge um, 10 years or so ago? And you know, how has it evolved since then to where it is today? It's a great question. I appreciate it. Well, here's the deal. Um, there's a lot of things that are out there. So I think if you're ever going to create something, 
you have to sit back and say to yourself, how do I make it different, better, unique? There's a lot of ways to state pretty much what I just said. And um, what I found was were there were a lot of people out there talking about goal achievement. Of course there were. But no one was really talking about accelerated. And what was on my mind, what fascinated me was, you know, listen, we've been around the block and everyone who's listening has as well. It's easy for all of us to wrap our minds around the idea that we could do speed reading. I've learned that. That we could do speed, you know, speed cups. My kids do that. So we've got that down. You know, there's speed dating. There's speed networking. Then you start to kind of go through and every single sport that you're involved with, there's speed drills, line drills and so forth designed to do that. You know, there's speed as it relates towards math and, and everything else. Why is it so difficult for people to wrap their mind around the idea that you could speed up your results? And that was the general premise of it. And then from there, you know, it was just it, it was kind of using myself as a guinea pig, honestly. And what I mean by that is every business I've been involved with and I've, I've got my fingers and toes and a bunch of things still, everything has been involved around what I call basically a blitz or a, spr a sprint mentality. MCI and AT&T, they split up in the early 80s. And I, uh, I worked for them for just for a summer. I came back and I said, you know, I think I can do this. And just right, no one's paying attention to the college market. So I understood it. So came up with the company name, bought time from AT&T. But I had, limited, I had limited bandwidth from the standpoint of when I could go out and prospect and market. And it came down to weekends. I had Saturday, I had Sunday. So what I did was I basically just kind of got up, put my mind behind, my, you know, my mindset right. And I went out and I, you know, I started rudimentary posters up, sliding under dorms and fraternities and everything else. And then we started to do group presentations where rather than do one to one, I realized that there's a, there's a lot more influence in, in one to many. So rather than do a one hour presentation to one person or one student, why not get 50 kids? Why not get the entire dorm in and get the RA to organize that for me? So what I was doing was, and when I compared it to other salespeople at MCI and people that I'd gotten to know, I was making more money in one day than some of these guys were making over the course of a month. And in some cases, I was basically walking out of there with a 90, 95% close rate just because they had, they had no other alternative. Most of us were having our phones turned off. So it was amazing. And that, that I've taken that model and I've matured it and matured it and refined it in every single thing that I do. And, and in this case, what I've come to realize is that 100 days is a beautiful period of time. And again, if, if people are concerned, if, if they don't think they could get the kind of results they want, let's, let's give them some proof. Let, let's go outside the 100-day challenge. You know, there's a program called P90X. I know you're familiar with it. Um, and just about everyone is listening. What, what happens here? This is what you would call a radical body transformation, a complete body transformation where people go from fat and flabby to firm and fantastic in 90 days. There's more than enough evidence to, to tell you that that's possible. Can you change your, your physical body around in 90 days? Yeah, you bet your bippy you can. The same thing is true. And the, again and again, there's a show on TV and, and I had, I had been a little bit of a hand behind it. It was Extreme Home Makeover. And Extreme Home Makeover essentially is they would they, – they, I don't know if they had in Canada, but they didn't here in the States – where they would come in and they would basically tear down a home or improve upon it. And they were building a 3,000, 4,000 square foot home in seven days, moving ready. Normally, it would take two, three, four hundred days in order to do that. Some of these mansions take years in order to build. So they were greatly compressing the time frame. How did they do it? What are the, what are the strategies and everything else? There is more than enough evidence – that people can accelerate and compress time. They just don't know how to do it. So my whole premise was, how do I teach them the strategies in order to deploy in an, an obscenely strong offense and keep them focused over a 100-day period of time? And if they stuck with it, and that's the big if, if they stuck with it, um, that they could get some extraordinary results. And, and I've been fortunate enough to see people move some serious mountains in 100 days, really have. Yeah, you know, like, like I said, it'd be a huge difference for my life. I've definitely been able to accelerate um, the process of achieving a lot of my goals. And, um, you know, definitely you've, you've, I think you've really fine tuned it to a point where, you know, it's really consistently helping a lot of people get some amazing results in their lives. So I, I want to wrap up in a, a little bit, but I just want to mention for those that are watching this right now, if you're interested in joining the 100 Day Challenge, uh, Gary only does make it available certain times throughout the year. So uh, at the time of you watching this video right now, it is available for a limited time. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, just go to projectlifemastery.com forward slash 100 day challenge. 
I have a link below in the description. And then one thing that uh, Gary has graciously done as well is because you guys are a, sub a subscriber of Project Life Mastery, you're here, you're watching, you're listening to this, uh, Gary has uh, offered a $50 off coupon code that you guys can use to get 50 bucks off your purchase. Um, just on the checkout, use the code MASTERY. Okay, use the code MASTERY and you'll save 50 bucks from that. And I also wanna do something for those of you as well that are watching and again, committed to joining the 100 Day Challenges. I'm gonna offer a little bonus for you guys. Uh, I have a program called Life Mastery Accelerator and it's a monthly mentoring program that I have where I have a lot of uh, videos and content to help people to improve and master every aspect of their lives. And I wanna offer this as a bonus for those that decide to join uh, Gary's 100 Day Challenge. Um, all you gotta do is forward your receipt to support at projectlifemastery.com and my team will set you up with 30 days free access to that training program. So that's just another bonus that I wanted to throw in. Um, but Gary, do you have a, a final message to share with people around the 100 Day Challenge and, and for those that uh, are looking to achieve their goals? Yeah, um, let's have, what about, uh, remember we talked about that exclamation mark before? Yes. So let's send them off with one. Um, I'm gonna give you a math equation, everybody. So what you wanna do is realize this, is that I, I like finite terms. I like things that have, again, I like points that have absolutely no exceptions. So here's one of them. We have a tendency of using the word democracy and we think about that from a government standpoint, but let me just give you a different take on, on what democracy looks like. There's only one model, there's only one thing that is truly democratic in this world. It's the only thing that has ever existed, and it's time. Everyone who's listening right now has the exact same amount of time throughout the day. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, black or white, if you got hair on your head or not, just the way that it goes. Sorry about that, Stephen. I don't know if it's a sensitive point. But anyway, the idea being is just this, is that there's 525,600 minutes in a year. That's, that's just a finite number. It's 525,600 minutes. You don't get any more. Now, if you take that, if you want to sit back and say to yourself, I want to make more money in a 100-day period of time, maybe you want to double, triple, quadruple your income, here's the way you do it. What you do is you take last year's income and you divide it into 525,600. So if you want to make a million dollars, I'm going to tell you right now, that means your time is worth $1.92. You need to break it down, and I'm going to explain to you why afterwards. Next, if you want to make $525,600, that means you need to make it a dollar per minute. If you're currently making $50,000 a year, you're making 10 cents per minute. That means when you're eating and sleeping and walking and listening and watching this, this webinar and everything else, just the way that it goes, that's the math and that's just the way that it works. And for some, I hope that really scratches an itch right now, I really do. So here's the deal. What you have to realize, as I mentioned before, is that the only way you're going to increase your income level, if you will, is to find ways to add greater value. To add greater value, you need better execution strategies. You need smarter, better. Listen, the, the best you've done, the best you've got is the best you've done is what you're showing right now. That's it. And if you think you've got more, which I'm quite confident everybody does, okay, that means that you need to find smarter, better, faster ways to execute. Now, what this program does is it focuses in really on, on it, we've heard like, you know, uh, on what I call micro decisions. And throughout your life, your whole – throughout your day, you're going to be making a whole series of micro decisions. Each one of them, again, is going to be advance or retreat. It's going to be right or wrong. It's going to be good or bad. It's going to take you north or south. So what you start to do, especially as it relates to your income, you start to realize that in order for me to go from, let's just say, 50 cents a minute uh, or 10 cents a minute, which is just $50,000 a year, upwards to a dollar a minute, that's a 90-cent gap. What are you going to do in order to close that gap? And I promise you, it's going to be a whole list of small things. That's why the beauty of the 100-day challenge is it works on a whole series of small things, smart, better moves, looked at mentally differently, but certainly executed in a much better format. Do that, you'll start to increase your income fast. I love it. Well, I, I want to say thank you so much, Gary, for taking the time. Highly recommend the 100-day challenge. Uh, again, you guys can access it at www.projectlifemastery.com forward slash 100-day challenge. Use coupon code MASTERY to save $50 and forward your receipt to support at projectlifemastery.com and we'll happily set you up uh, with the bonus for one month of Life Mastery Accelerator. So thank you again, Gary. Appreciate your time today. And uh, thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment below and subscribe for more videos. Take care.